Today's recipe calls for a small variety of apples. I'm going to show you how to make homemade apple cider. If you're not a huge fan of PSLs, this is the perfect alternative fall drink. There's very few ingredients in this, and it's one of those set it and forget it kind of recipes. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do in a large stock pot is toast all of our spices. We're going to toast four whole cinnamon sticks, one teaspoon of allspice, and one teaspoon of clove. You're going to crank your heat up to about medium. We're going to toast all of our spices for about five to six minutes or until they become nice and fragrant and smell. And off on the side, we're going to crush one whole nutmeg. You're going to toast all of your spices in a dry pan, just like this. Toasting all of your spices will help bring out some of the natural oils that are in our spices, and then it'll make things a lot more fragrant, giving us more flavor in our apple cider. You can totally skip this step and not toast any of your spices, or you can also use browned ingredients instead of whole spices. Doing whole spices like this will give you a better flavor though. Then occasionally, you want to give your pot a stir. This will help ensure that you don't burn anything. We get a nice even toast on all of our spices. And while you're at it, you might as well be listening to Spice Girls, because why not? Now that all of our spices have become nice and fragrant and have a nice toast on them, we're going to take out all four cinnamon sticks and set those aside. And we're going to round up our whole allspice and our whole clove. And at the ready on the side, you should have a small piece of cheesecloth ready to go. We're going to make a bouquet of spices. You can totally skip this step and leave all of your spices free in your pot, but this makes it easier to keep track of everything when we go to strain our apple cider. Now that we have all of our spices in the cheesecloth, we're going to grab one whole nutmeg that has been crushed and add that to the rest of our spices. And you're going to wrap this up to make a small bouquet of spices and then realize that you don't have enough cheesecloth and have to go get more. What a noob. Then if needed, cut yourself some more cheesecloth. You want enough to make a tight ball of spices and enough cheesecloth at the top that you're able to tie it with some butcher's twine so nothing comes apart and you lose all of your spices in your pot. Now that you have enough cheesecloth, all your spices should be right in the center and then grab all four corners to make a little sack and grab some butcher's twine and tie it really tight. I wrapped around the top of it at least two times to ensure that we didn't lose anything and nothing came apart. You can tie it any which way you want, tie a knot or do some bunny ears in the hoop swoop and pull kind of method. Either one will work and then you can cut off any of the excess butcher's twine that you have left over. I double knotted mine for good luck. This is what you should end up with is a small sack of spices like this and your four cinnamon sticks. We'll set that aside so we can move on to the next step. Next we're going to cut 10 to 12 large apples. I use a small variety of apples for this. Use some Granny Smith, some Gala, and some Fuji apples. Of course the sweeter the apples you use the sweeter your apple cider is going to be. I like the Granny Smith because it brings some tartness to the table and cuts the sweetness from the sweeter apples. You're going to quarter all of your apples. Once you have them quartered you're going to cut the cores out of them. I found it easy easiest and a lot safer and a lot quicker to cut your cores out like this, leaving the apple wedge on the cutting board and cutting into the apple sideways. This is a lot safer instead of trying to stand a wedge up and cut the core out. The wedge is going to be super wobbly and you can also use bruised apples for this. We're going to cook these apples down super far so it doesn't really matter if they're lightly bruised or not. And of course use your best judgment if it's too bruised and too far gone then cut that piece out and don't use that certain piece. The rest of the apple should be just fine though. Then once you have your apple wedges cut and de cored you're going to throw them in your large stock pot, the one that we use to toast all of our spices in. So burn through and cut all of your apples the same exact way. And if you wanted to, you can also cut those wedges into smaller pieces or even use an apple core if you choose. Now that we have all of our apples cut and back in our pot, we're going to throw the pot right back on the heat. We're going to add one whole orange that has been peeled and most of the pith has been cut off. Then we're going to add our bouquet of spices and all four of our cinnamon sticks. I recommend that you shove your cinnamon sticks in there the best you can. This way when we go to add our water they'll be completely submerged and will help bring more flavor to our apple cider. Once we have all of our goods in our stock pot we're going to start filling it up with some water. You want to ensure that you leave a two inch gap from the top of your stock pot. Leaving the small gap like this will help prevent any overflowage once our stock pot and our mixture hits a boil. You may get a slight overflow of liquid on your stock pot but leaving a small gap like this will help 
help prevent it from being a large mess. And I recommend that you peel your orange before you throw it in there. Leaving the orange peel on there will bring some bitterness to your apple cider, which is totally fine if that's what you're going for, but you don't want your apple cider to be too bitter. And I also recommend that you get as much of the pith off as well, because we already all know the pith is fairly bitter itself. Now that your pot has enough water, you're gonna crank your heat all the way to high. We're gonna bring this entire mixture up to a simmer. Once our pot has hit a simmer, we're gonna crank our heat down to a medium low. Once you have your heat cranked down to a medium low, you're gonna cover your apples with a tight fitting lid. Or if you don't have a lid, you can use some tin foil and wrap it tightly around your stock pot. This will help keep all the heat in and will help cook our apples down. Now that we have our apples covered and cooking on the stove top over low heat, we're gonna cook our apples for two hours, even though this timer says one hour, we're gonna cook them for two hours or until our apples are nice and soft and easily smashable. Now that our timer has gone off and our apples are soft, we're gonna start smashing all of our apples right in our pot. If you left the orange peel on your orange, now would be the perfect opportunity to take it out before you start smashing all of your apples. Of course, I peeled my orange, so I'm gonna smash it right along with all of our apples. The perfect tool for this job is a potato masher. Unfortunately, I don't have one, so I used a wooden spoon and it worked just fine. If you are using a wooden spoon like I am, you can use the side of your pot and smash your apples against the side of the pot and it works really well. And if you're using a coated non-stick stock pot for this recipe, ensure that you do not use a metal potato smasher. If you do so, you'll end up ruining your pan and taking off all of that non-stick coating and that'll be in your apple cider and that's not good. Smashing all of your apples will help release all the juices that they hold and will help release any of the juices that the apples have sucked up during the cooking process. And I'm sure you've all noticed I made a rookie mistake and used too small of a pan so I had to switch over to something larger. And then I found this whisk thingy that my grandma gave me a long time ago and uh, it seemed to work pretty well. I think it's a whisk anyways, I don't really know, but it works. So use whatever you have to smash all of your apples. You want to ensure that you smash all of your apples in your pot. Now that you've smushed and smashed all of your apples and your oranges, you're going to recover your pot with your lid or tinfoil in my case, and we're going to cook our apple cider for an additional hour. This will help reduce the liquid and in turn will intensify the apple cider flavor and make our drink that more delicious. Now that our apples have cooked down for three hours and we're left with a nice delicious drink, we're going to start straining our apple cider. You can use a fine mesh strainer or even use a strainer that's lined with cheesecloth to do this. I used a normal strainer and everything worked just fine. All right, a small disclaimer here. I ended up messing up on the straining part of the apple cider. You will definitely want to use a fine mesh strainer or if you don't have that, use cheesecloth. The cheesecloth will work just as well. So the consistency of your apple cider should be more of like a darker apple juice. Mine came out a little too thick, which in the end, it's not that big of a deal. It's just the wrong texture. It still tastes great. So you live and you learn. And when you use the cheesecloth, all you're going to do is pick it up out of your strainer. It should be like a gunny sack of apple pulp. All you're going to do is wring that out and get as much of that apple cider as possible out of that. And yeah, there you go. I'll let you get back to the video. And then you're going to use the back of your ladle to help press on all the apple solids and any of the spices to help extract as much juice as possible from all of our goods. This way we get a higher yield and we get as much flavor out of this as possible. The only thing that should be left over in your strainer is all of your spices. This is why I recommend that you tie up all of your whole spice in clove and cheesecloth. This way it'll make the straining process that much easier and you don't have to worry about pressing any of the spices all the way through. So burn through and do this for your entire pot of apple cider. And of course, discard anything that has been left over in your strainer. There's no use for any of it. Now that we've strained our apple cider and it's warm, we're going to give it a taste and we're going to adjust the seasoning as needed. I went with a small pinch of sea salt. The salt will help bring out more of the natural flavors in all of our fruits and spices. Then I added a small bit of maple syrup. Maple syrup will give it that flavor of maple and will slightly sweeten our apple cider. You can sweeten your apple cider as needed with either brown sugar, maple syrup, or even granulated sugar. It doesn't really matter. Mine was pretty sweet as it is, so I didn't need to add any additional sweetener to our apple cider. 
Now that your apple cider is done, grab your favorite mug and a ladle and start serving yourself up a fat cup of this homemade apple cider that you work so dang hard on. You can garnish your apple cider with a toasted cinnamon stick or even with an orange segment to give it that nice aesthetic look and add a little extra flavor. No matter what you decide to do, enjoy, cheers, you worked hard for this one. All right, now that our apple cider is done, let's give it the old taste of room. And while this stuff was cooking down, I had the thought of like, what happens if this comes out really terrible and I wasted all that time for no reason? Well, that would have really sucked, but don't worry, it came out great. And a little pro tip for you, when you go to taste it and then say it's not aptly enough for you and you want it to be more concentrated of a flavor, go ahead and throw it back on the stove and reduce it down some more, which will help concentrate the flavor and then season it after that. Just a pro tip. All right, now let's give it a taste. The color on it came out really great, nice and brown like an apple cider should be. It smells really delicious and spicy and apple-esque. Cheers. This is, came out super delicious. It's nice and warm and comforting and apple-y, of course. Then it's slightly sweet, but it's the perfect sweetness because it's all the natural sugars from the apples. Then we get a little bit of sweetness from the maple syrup that we added. Then that maple helps bring some more flavors to the table to make it more fall-esque. And then it's slightly acidic and bitter from the orange that we added, but it's not too bitter. It matches really well with the sugar in there. And then it's nice and spicy from all the spices we added. And that cinnamon shines through really well. And apple and cinnamon, of course, pair really well together. This could either be served hot or cold. I prefer it hot. I think that's the only way to have it on a cool fall day or any time in the holiday season. Cheers. All right, that's it for today's video. This recipe is really easy. It's more of one of those time-consuming marathon cooking events kind of recipes. But in the end, it makes your house smell really good and you get a nice delicious drink in the end. So it's kind of one of those twofer type of deals. And I think this is the new hip drink for 2021 because I'm pretty sure this is what all the gringas are drinking. Really not sure though. And I'm gonna use this apple cider in another video, so stay tuned to check that one out as well. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video, thanks for watching, and I'm gonna go bob for some apples in my bathtub because that doesn't sound disgusting. But first, I'm gonna call my brother to see if he wants to play lifeguard because, you know, safety first. Safety first, my friends. So we'll see you on the next one. Today's recipe calls for apollonies. Apolloni sounds like something made in a lab, like a combination of bologna and apples, which sounds super disgusting. And these are the things I think of when I try to go to sleep at night. It's pretty terrible. Before you taste it, or... I, I didn't say it right. It's definitely all natural sweetness because we get so much sugar from the natural apples. Natural apples, huh? Came out super delicious. It's nice and warm and comforting. It's my head itches, that's what it is. And that salt helps add some more richness to it. No, it's, it doesn't. All right, that's it for this video. This recipe is really easy. It's more of a cooking marathon kind of event, which is totally fine because it makes your health, your health, 